Hello Chipsters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we will be having a look at, as he picks up gently, my lav uh, command variant, so that's the uh, C, <laughs> C2, S, yeah C2, that's it, command variant C2, US Marine Corps lav, uh, I'm going to put this one in as being in Kosovo as part of the uh, peacekeeping force there, uh, there's quite a few photographs on the internet uh, of the of the uh, United States Marine Corps uh, labs in in, Kos in their peacekeeping role in Kosovo, which means uh, when I get to actually start doing the, the next bits and pieces, which I hope will either be today or tomorrow, um, I can put the the K4. They used to just more. You can see it's just been handwritten K4 at the front and the sides and whatever. So that'll show a bit of interest. Uh, it was. Um, no real issues spraying, as I say, it's it's all fairly new to me. Uh, I'm starting to get out of the uh, dry tip uh, on the needle, or the, the the worst thing for me is I tend to have that uh, flicking paint. You know, you get the little spots, and there there really stuffs up your your, your paintwork. Then um, I think I had it one tiny little bit on this particular model. Uh, the only bit was around one of the hatches where I'm still struggling in getting in around the around tight areas with the with the airbrush and actually not pooling it you know I'm just keep because you keep trying to have that bit of primer showing so you try different angles and uh, I've got a slight orange peen in fact as we just talked let me just have a quick see if it shows up yeah it does slightly not much though but when I put the weather in on you won't see that uh, but yeah so I had a very small bit of Ripley um, which was most of it's gone away around the I don't know if it's a commander's hatch uh, at the very top of the vehicle, uh, but no, it's, it's not gone too bad. I've given it a a soft edge camo, so no uh, no um, masking with the with the white uh, white putty, whatever they call it, white tack. That was a word I might have been after. Um, so I've done that soft, which I was quite glad about because it, it's everything's. Obviously new to me, you've got to learn to mask sometime. Uh, when I tried to mask that Starfighter off, I couldn't get the putty to stay on, and I didn't know if it was, if it was cheap putty or what, but it just would just kept falling off. It was a blooming nightmare. So, obviously, like as all, I go on the internet looking at different reference photographs, and almost half the photographs seem to have them with a soft edge, and half of them seem to have with a, a slightly harder edge, or even that was, was still softer than, than I'd think. So, uh, the only thing I, looking back, I'd have probably done differently is I kept the same nozzle on, which was a, I've got one of these um, Bart Sharp airbrushes, and it comes with all the, the I think five, three, and two uh, needles, and I could, I think if I'd have put the two on, and I did be honest straight with you, I'd never thought I've, I've never used it without a three because I've got a, a an old Iwata a Neo, and I just that's just got a five in in the needle size and I use that for all my large scale spraying of primer and, and things uh, these days. I've also got one of those Procon boys as well which I've not used yet but I will get around to it. Um, but yeah it, it's so it's it's spread probably the, the air, surface area of the, the camouflage the browns and the, the black was, was probably what I expected but but I probably got a bit of softer overspray onto the green more. Uh, I think the only thing that will save me though is I'll be able to um, do all my oils, which is why I've only done one colour on this. I've done no modulations or anything. Uh, I've done it like this. Uh, then it's going to have oils on, and then the weathering on. So it's going to it's, it's it's a lot of them that I saw were quite faded. Um, so I'm hoping somehow <laughs> to 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 teach myself how to do that. So if you like to join me at the bench, guys, and I've probably talked over everything that I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll have a look at the vehicle. See you in a minute. Right, guys. Thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, and it's nice to have some lights on the subject for a change. Uh, even if I am getting radiated, the uh, the paintwork, as I say, for me has, as again for a newbie, as as it's not too bad. I I think it's all right. Um, the Just try and get. I've got these nice strong lights now, and they're <laughs> bleaching out things. Um, as you can see, I've got some some obviously slight over further overspray here, um, and there's the odd spot that's come out the the airbrush. 
um, but I'm hoping that uh, with some weathering that will hopefully soften everything up so it's not going to look too bad I'm hoping as you can see I'm really proud of the wheels and now these are only help they'll just literally push these on to sit the vehicle down at the moment uh, bearing in mind I've got to take them off uh, I haven't I think I painted behind <laughs> spray behind one of the rims uh, on the vehicle uh, and then completely <laughs> forgot to do seven six or seven of the other behind the rims uh, so I'm gonna have to I'm not going to get the airbrush out now uh, I'll probably just hand paint them on because they're they're behind the you know you won't see them when they're on it's only when I I turn it up like this um, obviously I've got a weather all under the bottom but you can see the you can see the rims but they've they're only literally just pushed on at the moment so that's why they're not all completely you know flat at the at the sides but they do all sit flat um, I've scuffed up the tyres as best I can. I can't really I've got too many fingerprints on it. I've tried to remove the seam line as best I can. Um, as I say, I'm hoping that's uh, that's done the trick. It is, you can still see it in parts, but I'm going to gunge this up quite a lot with a lot of road filth and that, you know. Uh, uh, jerry cans have got to still go on here. I'm painting those. It's just a, one of the said jerry cans. I'm still working on those only because of the way they conformed. If you'd, if I'd have tried to just stick them on the vehicle and and I must notice I've got two more spots there as well. Oh well, <laughs> going around the difference between an aircraft and armour is you can go around with the road filth and uh, cover it up. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it was just that I, I, with my abilities, I was worried that I wouldn't get in behind. The, the jerry can so I'm painting those separately and putting them on uh, then if you can see oh, let's, not, let's not have that wheel fall off on us now as I say these things here I believe are for putting the tent up at the back of the vehicle or the awning or whatever you want to call it but yeah the, the, I'm really chuffed all the wheels sit flat bit of spongy is actually what I use to rest my hands on when I'm painting figures. Um, it's not there to cunningly disguise any any wheels that don't touch the ground. Um, exhaust I painted off separately. Uh, as you can see, I've, this is the brass work that I've done, the photo etch. I don't believe I'll put any other photo etch on anything. And there's a bit more you can put on straps and stuff like that. The one thing I'm disappointed it doesn't have, which if you can see here, these are straps for the spare. They'll often you'll see them often with a spare tire uh, sticking out the side. Either sometimes I've seen them with with obviously the full wheel, which makes sense, and then other times I've even seen them with just a spare tire without the rim on. Uh, and it would have been nice for them. I don't, you know, I don't know why they haven't provided that. To be honest with you, uh, and it would it's a shame uh, because yeah, you know they've got they've angled the straps as if they're just you know hanging down, but. It would have been nice to have had that on the side, and I don't have any of these type of spares to to, to do anything about that. Uh, there's still loads to be done yet, really, or well, little bits to be done. Uh, again, more jerry can, another jerry can goes on there. Got to paint the covers of these smoke um, projectors, uh, grenades, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the I've seen these standard like black rubber, but I've actually also seen them on Kosovo ones with a. It's, it's almost like a bright green. Uh, rubber as well. I, I don't know if that's from the factory or if it's the Marine Corps have put those on as a separate, you know, in field thing. I've got to put obviously make up some antennas as well. That's going to be fun trying to get them onto here. Uh, what else did I think of doing? Obviously, the machine gun's still being, I've painted it roughly, but it's still got a, more work done to that, and then I'll stick that on. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the Little winch at the front, just obviously paint that in is, is like a steel colour. Uh, the mirrors, as I said, I've got some some sticky back, uh, well, it's like um, a mirror effect, so I'm, I'm actually going to try that. I was wondering, although I think I'll probably to try and get it on these vision ports or blocks, I think I'll struggle now. That's something I... I didn't think about it at the time. I could have probably had a go at uh, doing that. So they're they've got to be painted in some description. Same on the front here, on the driver's front. As I say, it does come with a 
with um they have a special driver's hatch cover i take it's bulletproof and whatever uh the only problem i have with that is um there's there's no interior and you'll you'd see it also I've, I've left it all you know the entire like like the the Merkava that I did earlier on um, until I've got in, you know the money to either do interior kits or have something where you don't see a lot or I've got the skills to make an interior um, they're always going to have to be buttoned up unfortunately so this particular vehicle when I've actually done it it's not going to be a uh, a diorama or anything, it'll just be a standalone vehicle. As I say, uh, you know, again, what I say so far, I mean, let's face it, the only thing I've got to stuff up now is the weathering and the bits and pieces to, to put on it. I do intend to have a go at getting my, my uh, putty out and trying to make some, some backpacks to hang off it and things. Uh, more of a practice for when I do other vehicles, really. But uh, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I've painted it in uh, my Starfighter colours, more or less. <laughs> uh, the brown, the brown is um, uh, a different one that I've got. Uh, but they're all um, what are they? AK real colours. So because of the aircraft, they have that slight. It gives you a slight metallic sheen to it. It's not as flat. But saying that, they are probably going to put a flat coat all over it anyway. Um, but you know that my thoughts were by the time I've mooched around with the actual oils and stuff you know it's uh i mean the black is it'll fade it anyway that the black is that nato black which is is more of a gray smoky black uh, it's a lot softer than a harsher black uh, so no it's a nice little vehicle as i say it's um you know for somebody like myself learning um not too much filling involved I still stuffed a lot of that up. <laughs> Tried to make the welds out of putty. Well, I was filling them. I was filling them in anyway. So I made the. It was the only seam really you had to fill, which was the join of the two halves. Uh, and there was a very slight bit on the back, uh, but not too much. You can pose these doors open on the back, uh, and they've even got the handles for the back of the doors and stuff. But again, it's just a, a great big empty interior. So you've either got, to, you know, you you guys that make these models all the time. Uh, and been doing it for years you know you've you've got the skills to probably make an interior out of, of plastic card and things but for me it's a bit i'm overreaching myself at the moment you know it's it's really a case of going back to basics and getting these these simpler kits and learning how to stick plastic together and and you know stuff so yeah that's uh that's our progress uh it's uh oh, the, as i say the next stage is going to be weathering uh, well, painting all the bits that need to be painted still, getting the jerry cans on, uh, weathering the, the actual main vehicle itself. In the meantime, I'm going to attempt to make some packs and things just to hang off the sides and, and different. I haven't got any, again, people in long standing, you know, make, you, you have tons and tons in your uh, spares boxes that you can stick on. I mean, even this I've got, I've, I've ended up with some spare some spare pioneering tools and stuff for the for, for another vehicle I could use um, but I haven't got you know what a lot of you guys have got for, for just reaching into a box and sticking on all over the place so um, that'll come after a few years I'm quite sure <laughs> so uh, thanks for stopping by and taking a look guys um, as I say this is the Trumpeter 1 in 35 scale uh, US Marine Corps LAV C2 and as I say mine's going to be based in, in Kosovo uh, in the is it the late nineties? I can't remember now, but yeah, that's what's going to be. So take care of yourselves, and we will catch each other very very soon on another video. Cheers.